Hi, Zizzerin here with another video, and in this video, we are going to do a Blight Ravaged map. You might have seen that I have several videos giving tutorials for how to easily do Blights, and that was actually a request by you guys, and something I hadn't initially thought of. And I probably will make a generic, like, easy Blight video as well, because Blight can get so easy that you don't actually need to attack yourself, you can just build towers. Now I'm going to do the more in-game version, a Blight Ravaged map, which, you know, I might not even be able to do, we'll see, but, um... I'm going to do one and walk through my thought process on everything I'm doing. So let's go in game and have a crack at it. So I've just finished buying some ring anointment oils. So I already have meteor tires create burning ground. That is the two purples creates that. So that's very cheap and you can get that early. This is a more expensive one. And I usually don't even recommend that for like the cheap Blight stuff I do, but now that we are um, doing Blight Ravaged maps, they are quite a lot harder. So now we actually might have to do that. So a Blight Ravaged map, the easiest thing, let's see. I can't remember what the other ones do. This is more for awards, I think. I think all of those are awards and I don't even have every oil. But if you want to make it as easy as possible, remember that they can be anointed three times. I've now anointed it with your monsters are 36% slower, towers deal 75% more damage, and 75% reduced cost and building of upgrading towers. Now, this is the absolute easiest version you can do. Once you get comfortable with doing them, and especially if you have a detonate dead build that just shits on these because you detonate one monster, since their HP goes up, it kind of stays the same. So DD builds very, very good for these. Now we can roll it. We don't want to make it too crazy because Blight Ravage maps are really hard and I don't have a build specifically for that. Um, so I want to be scared of tank mods, basically. Uh, you know what? That's probably okay. We'll do that. And then I also like to put in Sacrificial Fragments just for some extra quant because quant does affect what's in the chest now. Now, in my opinion, at least for how I've been doing them, there is some RNG to Blight Ravish maps. And that is basically, in in some Blight Ravish maps, it'll give you really bad choke points. Like, really, really bad where the towers are. And I'll try to explain. And you get Blight Ravish maps by doing tier 14 to 16 normal maps. I like to, at the start, put a portal far away so I don't accidentally misclick it because it's basically all over if you leave. So first, let's do this and look. So there is very little stun immune. So unless I get very bad positioning, this is going to be a done deal, right? <clears throat> the number one setup I like to do is one chilling tower, one stunning tower, and one empowering tower. This is perfect. So this line here, pretty much nothing is getting past this already. But Zizarin, why are you only upgrading them to level 3? Why aren't you upgrading them all the way to level 4? Excellent question. The reason for that is they lose their level 3 effect. So here, improves the effectiveness of players in range. Well, it stops buffing the towers. Weakens enemies in range. It stops buffing the towers. And these just turn completely different. So most towers, except Meteor, I put at level 3. I don't mind having like a Meteor tower here. A couple of meteor it's towers. Exile. And the we could do since we um there's nothing that's stun immune. So now with two stun towers here, nothing is getting past here. And then what I like to do, I'll put another chilling tower here, just for more damage uptime on the meteors. It's put out new mycelium. Maybe another one over here, because they can fire new that rocks. far. They don't even need to be leveled up really. The meteor towers does. The chilling tower is doing pretty good work and helping the meteors clear. So, so far, I don't even need to attack myself. That would be the best case scenario if I can go pretty much the entire time without attacking. I would love to do that because then it's sort of independent of the build. Um, it will depend on how things are it's as well. So here I do an empowering tower. And then I do two of those. And I, again, I do focus on upgrading at least like my main line of defense mycelium. there. So now same thing here. And then I don't mind doing chilling tower there. And we're going to do a bunch of meteors. Accidentally putting down an explosive totem there. That doesn't really matter. And you got to make sure that you keep moving. You don't want to get killed. New roots. 
Um, so this is another line to the actual, through the defenses here. Let's see, I think I'm here going to rely on this one from the buff. So I'll put seismic here, chilling here, and hope that this hits all the way in there. Which it doesn't, that's kind of annoying. Then I'm going to build some more meteor towers here. Maybe one chilling tower there. You can say that I do like putting... Oh, whoops. I thought my uh, defenses were falling there, but we're good. I do like to put a chilling tower in now and again. That's mostly to give the meteor towers like ample time What's to actually drop their alien? meteor and things. Ugh, new roots. They're... Very often will only be like two ways into the pump. There might be a fourth one here, so a little bit unlucky. The only time that it's like very RNG is if you have like a weaker build and you just don't get any I pumps anywhere near. Now, I don't think they fixed this still, but ours are only attacking while you can see them attacking, which is pretty annoying. The the is trying to spread. Do you know what? We just do more damage now. We'll just do more damage now. I think like most most everything is choke points. You can see what kind of towers I'm building and where I'm building them. Hopefully you see like a pattern of we can have a freezing tower here it's at the end. Exile. Facial cage. The last line of defense and then I will have to attack. Uh, but you can see like a pretty nice pattern here of I have one of the level the three empowering. One level three glacial or ice chilling, whatever, and then two level three seismics. You can see nothing's getting past. Nothing's really moving. I'm not attacking myself, so I'm not relying on my build and the fact that I actually have good damage here. Right? Like, everything, and even though I do have chill immunes, this is more than enough to stop everything. I haven't really attacked once, except by misplacing a totem at one point. And, and nothing's even getting through my main line of defense. I'm just keeping my endurance charges up with my forbidden right. What are these things? Okay, I don't know what they are, so I'm gonna kill them. Air fighting it and corpse exploded or something. That's like the main strategy. This is working out quite well. You can see that everything's starting to die in choke points. We have a lot of meteor towers. The main reason I'm not going and building more towers right now or killing is they're they're already dying just fine. And some of the bosses can be a little bit scary on hardcore. You can also like step on top of a boss corpse and get detonated. Uh, which is the number one thing that can kill any character on hardcore is to detonate dead. You can see I'm just staying here near spawn and just waiting for my towers to kill everything. And then once you get comfortable and you have more damage, etc. Like if you have insane amounts of damage, I only have like 15 million. But once you start having 25 million plus, you might care less about the towers. You just stand in the middle destroying everything as it comes. Or again, if you're playing a detonate dead build, that takes out everything. So, that's like the main strategy. It's 8 seconds till it starts finishing up. And you'll see some rewards will start popping up. But yeah, even without attacking, we were able to do a Blight Ravish map. So I didn't rely on my build at all here. And the Ring Anoint here was pretty expensive. This was like, I think it was 70 Chaos on Hardcore. And this one was like 2 Chaos. I basically could have had a naked build and done it in this instance. There will be some that are a lot harder. Um, I don't know how they got through my defenses. Uh huh. Either way, maybe they got chucked on top of me by one of the bosses. I wasn't really paying attention. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it is wrapping up now. We can go help clear out a little bit because some things aren't being hit by meteors, I guess. Or maybe they're meteor immune. We'll just go kill everything now. Hope I don't get detonated in. Hopefully that proves that, you know, it's not so much about the build. It's a little bit about luck if your build isn't strong. Because if I had a weak build right now and I couldn't pump out a lot of damage, I could have failed this if the towers are in wrong spots. And um, towers will stop attacking. Like if I move way over here, they would actually start leaking because the chill and the stun will not go on them. Somebody did say they faced out this leak, but I don't believe them and I didn't check. So the number one thing that I would want to drop would be an amulet uh, called Strangle Grasp. And item level 86 bows are pretty nice on hardcore. But uh, a Strangle Grasp would be really nice. And do a, a quick, I'm not going to loot it in the video, but we'll look through everything and see if I got anything nice. Obviously Strangle Grasp is the main thing you would want from this. 
But I always hate when people do like a video of things and they don't show the loot at the end. I don't think we got anything nice here. Obviously, I did not uh, anoint with extra loot as well, which you can do and uh, get even better stuff. You could also roll the map more because that does matter now. Fractured gear is not bad from here. Silver oil. So that was the oil that I bought. We made that back already. Like 50c on her core. And then a bunch of currency. Very often you will get divine orbs from these. Very often you'll get divine orbs. Um, good timing. Thanks, Grace. Good timing. Bring my client in full of fame. Um, all right. I think that's the last ones, too. There's some more stream RNG. No? All right. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed the Blight Ravaged video. I know they have done a Blight Ravaged one like this before. I hope you guys are enjoying the new format I'm trying to do where I do something and I try to explain my thought process as I'm doing things. So again, to sum it up, remember one buffing tower, one chill tower, and one stun tower will generally do everything with these annoyings. Uh, and then meteor towers all around to help with damage. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Sub if you like it, but more importantly, try to die than I do.